Can rock art be dated by the seasons of flora and fauna? Are we able to measurably survey terrestrial planes and night skies from distant millennia? Could we truly see the visions of Ice Age artists? Let us travel from this UISPP Congress to Upper Paleolithic Caves in Northern Iberia. Our first stop to explore these ideas is the El Pindal Cave in Asturias. Here we find markings, engraved lines, and interesting natural irregularities on the principal panel. We can break the principal panel into some of its elements and find features that have the appearance of a straight tusked elephant with lowered tusks and trunk. Note how the artist found the tusk in the natural gold irregularity. When we widen our view of the panel, the head of an unusual character emerges from behind the elephant. A green arrow marks the right side of the character's head. The character comes from over and behind the mountain and elephant. The flow of this representation that may be snaking through the red dashes area painted by the Ice Age artists are indicated by the blue arrows. This character has the impression of the wind. I believe that this character is a representation of the Basque Odi, who is the spirit of thunder and the personification of storm clouds. Odi is an agent of the Basque deity Mari, who dwells in a cave on the mountain Chindoki, which has lines that closely resemble the El Pindal panel. My pronunciation of Basque names are not likely correct, but they're spelled correctly in this presentation. Chindoki is a sacred space among the Basque people who have inhabited this region since at least the Neolithic. The origins of the Basque are an enigma, as many believe that their language is not strongly connected to any other European language groups. Scholars have asked where the Basque language came from, or if it was always in the region. Could Odi and Chindoki be words left from the Ice Age? For reference, there is a second Chindoki lookalike higher up on the panel that is without artistic improvements and what appears to be naturally formed from the same golden stream. Our travels take us to Cantabria, within the Las Monitas Cave, where we can view the panel of the masks from the same time period as the previously depicted El Pindal principal panel. On the panel of masks, we find the Paradolia elephant character visualized on Chindoki, as depicted at the previous El Pindal cave image. The peak of the elephant's head is marked by the red arrows. This elephant has previously been identified as a mammoth. We again find the wind character Odi, who comes from behind the mountain in this cosmoscape. There is also a therianthrope, a mix of human and another animal being in the center. The character has foxish ears and peers through a magical mask. One might consider the ears to be elven in today's mythological vernacular. A second mask facing down is to the viewer's far right. This panel was previously titled The Panel of Masks, based on the mask in the center and the illusion of masks among the surrounding dark lines. Those dark lines over Odie's outstretched right arm are flora, such as winged broom, marked by the red arrows, a large brown maple leaf as indicated by the blue arrows, and a scattering of Spanish junipers that appear to be blowing in the wind. One can sense a gust of air animating the flora. This panel has the appearance of a late summer scene, perhaps in the evening or just before sunrise when the colors of the flora cannot be seen. We travel back to the El Pindal cave in Asturias to view another panel, apparently unnamed from the lower Magdalenian. This panel has a strong resemblance to Untiak's in Biscay province, Basque country, that is well known for its climbing routes and birds of prey. Note that the El Pindal artists had a northeasterly view of Untiax. Here we find a Benelli's eagle feeding an insect larva to her eaglets. Benelli's eagles hatch one to two eaglets in early April. This scene is a few weeks later. A larger view of the insect larva is offset in the red box. The species of insect is unknown at present, but would determine time of year as well. An appropriate name for this image could be the panel of the eagles. We can find a Paradolia bird head and insect larva on the face of Utiax. Any eaglets are unclear. The El Pindal perspective is looking into the eagle's gigantic nest of Untiax. The Ice Age artist appears to have found irregularities on the panel that had the general appearance of Untiax and then improved upon them to more closely represent his or her vision. In continuing our investigation of the mountain landscape Paradolia cave art hypothesis, we journey to Pica Panminera, that is in Asturias, Spain. 
Pica Panmanera is a fairly low mountain at 763 meters, but has a lot of character. Regional mountaineers refer to this peak as the Little Matterhorn, based on similar geometry with the Matterhorn of the Alps. There is a rounded hill to the viewer's left, known as Pendendo. Pica Penmaniera has some resemblance to a panel in the Hall of Paintings at the Lost Chimeneas Cave. I've taken the liberty to name this scene the Panel of the Bears, in absence of any known name. Can you see the bears? We can more clearly see the bear and a stronger resemblance with Pica Penmaniera in this close-up shot even features for the bear cub blob on her head. One could reasonably question if we are Homo sapiens sapiens, the wise human, or Homo pareidolia who visualizes the impossible among mountains and cracks in the walls of caves. We now look to the night sky for answers. In this image generated in Starry Night Pro 8, a software package utilized by professional astronomers and planetariums, we can dial back the clock to look easterly in the direction of Pica Panmaniera to see what the cave artist would have viewed at that time and place. The she-bear, Ursa Major, is coming out from below the horizon to meet the dawn. Note the long tail in Ursa Major. Bears don't have long tails, which has been an astronomical curiosity. People around the world find the she-bear in the night sky as walking, climbing, on her back, and with or without her cubs. Constellations are founded in Paradolia where people have long projected what was meaningful into the sky. That pareidolia is at the foundation of art and astronomy. Here we see the tail area of Ursa Major representing the head of the she-bear, with her cub as visualized on Pica Panmaniera. This may explain where the long tail of Ursa Major derives from. The Las Bonitas artists likely followed the she-bear through the seasons and found her changing form with more of the currently recognized stars in this constellation. One group of stars that match a character depicted in an Ice Age cave with a landscape doesn't make a hypothesis. Examples from the other Ice Age characters are needed. First, to test the alternative of if and when the Paleolithic artists could have seen Ursa Major, we must consider an astronomical phenomenon called precession, whereby the Earth wobbles like a top over a 25,700-year cycle and one's ability to see stars from any one place on Earth changes over the cycle. We can see the same astronomical view of Pica Pemaniera, half a precession cycle closer to our time. The full figure of the she-bear walks along the horizon line, but doesn't drop below it. This would not be an astronomical representation of our Pica Penmaniera view as depicted on a wall in the Las Monitas cave. We can also look to the elephants depicted on the walls at Las Monitas and El Pindal to validate this astronomical perspective. The depicted horns of Taurus closely resemble the hind legs and trunk pareidolia of the elephant in Chindoki, as the mountain would have been viewed merging with the dawn. A half-precession cycle closer to our time, we cannot see Taurus in the pre-dawn sky. Looking from the same perspective at Chindoki as the El Pindal and Las Monitas artists, during the minutes before dawn 3,000 years ago, Taurus was on the eastern horizon and out of view in this image. Taurus could not have then fit the cave artist's late summer representation. We could travel with our astronomical software and not find the same cave art, mountain, astronomical fit until at the same time and place in the precession cycle. We can also use this astronomical approach to narrow the culture range of years when other archaeological dating tools are not accessible. Both Ursa Major as a bear and Taurus in the form of an elephant were known among Aurignacian peoples who visited the El Castillo Cave in Cantabria about 34,000 years ago. As shown here in this slide from previous astronomy presentations, the images presented today indicate that we are not looking at something new in the Magdalenian, and certainly not from ancient Greece, but rather an animistic astronomical tradition that had been going on for at least 20,000 years. Remember our northeasterly view of the Benelli's eagle on the face of Utiax.
looking in that same direction minutes before dawn 16,000 years ago, we can see the constellation Aquia. On the eagle's astronomical path, she will fly just above the visual horizon to meet with Utiax and the hungry eaglets on her journey into the dawn. In contrast, we can see Aquia high in the pre-dawn sky at the same time of year, a one-half procession cycle later, on a path the eagle traveled from below the visual horizon. This is not a good pictorial representation of the Elpindal Utiax Ice Age visualization. Aquia was also a recognized constellation 34,000 years ago. Among the Auric nations, as depicted here with the fledgling Golden Eagle, in a mid-June condition on the Gallery of Discs. Throughout this presentation, we explored thought-provoking interpretations of Ice Age panels. Archaeometry tools enabled us to orient ourselves in time and space, and visions of artists from distant millennia were rediscovered. In the Paleolithic mind, that are still our own. Thank you for the opportunity to present at this UISPP Congress.